the waif-like English actress Keira Knightley has enjoyed a meteoric rise to superstardom. Still only in her 20s, the star of both mainstream and arthouse cinematic masterpieces is able to pick and choose her roles. In 2008, Forbes estimated she was the second highest paid actress in the US, having earned an estimated $32 million in 2007 alone. She was the only non-American on the list of highest paid actresses. Her fine-boned, almost childlike features have allowed Kira to make a slow transition from adolescent roles to more mature characters. But by the time she took on the role of the sexually charged Cecilia in the British war drama Atonement, she was ready to play a fully-fledged woman. When Atonement came about, I was very much looking for um, a piece, of, a, a character who was a woman and not that kind of girl on the brink of womanhood. I wanted something that was very definitely grown up, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, in that way, it, it was a departure. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think I can answer that. I think, I think she was a, a fantastic character and one that I totally fell in love with from the first time that I read the script. I sort of, she's quite brittle. And, uh, and I found it, it's a fascinating period because it's very much a period where people, they didn't talk about their emotions, you know, so you have these emotions bubbling underneath. But no, they didn't quite know how to get them out. So, I, you know, I, I, I just thought she was amazing. The actress was born in Greater London in 1985 into a thoroughly artistic family. Her father, Will Knightley, was a theatre and television actor, and her mother, Sharman MacDonald, an award-winning playwright. Kira was absolutely determined to act from a young age, reportedly asking her parents for an acting agent at the age of three. She finally got her way at six. She made her first big movie appearance as Sabe in the blockbuster Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace. Sabe was Padme Amidala's decoy, and Kira was cast due to her amazing resemblance to Natalie Portman. Her breakthrough success came in the independent hit Bend It Like Beckham, which led to her casting as the very proper Elizabeth Swan in Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, produced by the legendary Hollywood icon, Jerry Bruckheimer. The London premiere threw the 18-year-old into the limelight. Um, I'm a bit nervous, actually, um, but yes, it, it is wonderful. And in terms of everything that you ever imagined it to be, is this just the way you expect it? Yeah, there are lots of people. It's absolutely amazing. It's very, very exciting. The swashbuckling adventure was inspired by a Disneyland ride. And while Kira was ready for some of the physical challenges of the role, she wasn't quite prepared for others, like wearing corsets. They were pretty tight. My, my waist was about 20 inches, um, which is frankly freakish. Um, I, I don't recommend it. You know, it gave me a great cleavage. I have to say I was very proud of that, but ugh, wear a push-up bra. Don't bother with the corset. It's really painful. Asked why she would take on a role in an action adventure, the English Rose said it was a no-brainer. Well, let me put it like this. Johnny Depp, Orlando Bloom, Jeffrey Rush in a Jerry Bruckheimer film. Why wouldn't you do this pirate film? <laughs> the camped-up pirate film took off like a rocket at the box office, and Hollywood's doors were well and truly opened for Kira. In 2005, she played a complex and fascinating character in the film Domino. Um, Domino, um, movie Domino, is based on a real girl called Domino Harvey, um, who, a real woman called Domino Harvey, who was the daughter of um, Lawrence Harvey and Pauline Stone. Um, she was a model, I think, when she was about 18, and then uh, and moved to L.A. and became a bounty hunter. So that's all true, and then the rest of the movie is, is fiction. So it is completely inspired by reality, but, but it isn't. <laughs> In a strange twist of fate, the real Domino Harvey died at the age of 35, just as the film was being released. Kira must have found some strange echoes with her own life as Domino was also the daughter of a well-known stage and screen actor. Portraying the infamous bounty hunter allowed Kira to hone the physical skills she developed in Pirates. There's a scene where we all get shot 
um, and, and squibs, they've got charges in, so they kind of explode out of you. And because we were all holding guns, we had our arms in the way of these exploding squids. So I think I've still oh no, got body makeup on, so all my, my scars are covered. But, um, but no, I've got scars all over my arms from these squibs. Hard-bitten veteran Mickey Rourke was impressed by the young actress's stiff upper lip. I saw some squibs go off that burnt her and made her bleed and stuff, but you know, she didn't cry about it. I cried more about it than her. You cried about yeah. her getting hurt? Or? No, I cried about me getting hurt, but then I looked at her and she wasn't crying, so I thought I'd better shut my mouth. <laughs> Kira found that she brought some of the bounty hunter attitude away with her. No, I mean, for like about a week after I finished Domino, I would sort of walk, you know, give it the big walk and think, yeah, I'm so cool. And then my friends were just like, what are you doing? So I felt very stupid after that. So no, no, I'm afraid I just walk like me now. In 2005, the actress began work on the next two pirate movies, which were rumoured to cost Disney $450 million. Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest was released in 2006 and Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End a year later. Back in 2005, when Kira won the Variety UK Personality Award at the UK Independent Film Awards, she'd been in the middle of a tough shooting schedule, but was clearly having a whale of a time. I think they're fantastic films, you know, the next couple, they're just bigger and better. I think they take a bit of a darker twist. Um, it, it's fantastic when you're doing something like a pirate movie, you can do so many different things with it. You know, there are so, so many stories to tell. Um, we've got one main character given by uh, Mr Depp, who people love so much. So it's exciting being part of something that people are so excited about. Aside from turning her into one of Tinseltown's top stars, the Pirates franchise gave Kira plenty of laughs on set most of them delivered by her heartthrob co-star, Johnny Depp. He wouldn't do the full Jack Sparrow if the camera was on you. As soon as the camera turned around, it's like you couldn't give him the off-camera lines because you were laughing too much. I think there'll be a lot of outtakes of just everybody pissing themselves in the middle of the, in the, middle of the scene. Johnny was equally admiring of Kira's skills, especially with a sword. She looked... Uh... Frighteningly uh, proficient, actually. You know, when she's swinging the sword around, you know, it was. Uh, um, it, it it made a lot of uh, men on set uncomfortable. Put it that way. Kira was in the enviable position of kissing both Johnny Depp and Orlando Bloom on screen, but she refused to state her preference. They're good. They're really good, both. And you know, people keep saying, "Well, who was the best kisser?" I'm like, "Well." They're both really good, and actually, if you don't have to choose, why bother? Take both. Becoming one of the highest paid actresses in Hollywood hasn't dampened Kira's appetite for appearing in smaller British films. In 2004, she was nominated for an Empire Award for Best British Actress for her portrayal of Guinevere in King Arthur. The updated retelling of the famous British legend also starred Clive Owen. And Kira loved being part of this boy's own tale. I loved it. Every single second. I absolutely adored it. We had the most amazing trainers. All the guys are amazing. And to get to spend a load of time with them and just... It was mucking around with the boys, really, which was great fun. And then you were one woman surrounded by all these knights. In leather. I think that's an important point. All those boys in leather. It was fabulous. Her next quintessential English role was as Elizabeth Bennet in the classic Pride and Prejudice. Despite being a huge Jane Austen fan, Kira almost turned down the role, which would cement her reputation as a serious dramatic actress. I have been obsessed with, with the book and with the character since I was seven, um, but I really didn't want to play it at all um, and because I didn't want to let her down. Um, and I didn't think I was ready for that kind of a lead role or, or anything like that. And it was my agent, Lindy, who, who just went, no, you're doing it. And I went, no, I'm not. She went, no, 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 you're going to do it. You'll really regret it if you don't do it. You're doing it. I went, no, I don't want to do it. She said, no, you are. She's now sitting in the other room, very smug indeed. And she has a right to be, because she was right. And I'm very glad that she made me do it. <laughs> the acting superstar Donald Sutherland, who played her father in the film, suffered no such doubts about Kira's capabilities. She's got so much more than what it takes. You know? She's brilliant. She's really brilliant. She's really brilliant. It was like working with a Zen Buddhist. She was perfect. She, I, I, she was so quiet and self-contained at the beginning, and then I watched her, and she was exquisite in her understanding and her 
you know, her perception, her ability to use herself and to follow what Joe Wright wanted. She was just great, really great. She was a joy to work with. Kira was thrilled to be nominated for a Golden Globe Award for Best Actress and very humbled to find herself in the company of such luminaries at the tender age of 20. It's amazing. I mean, it's just amazing to be, to, to have my name amongst those amazing people. I mean, you've got Judy Dench, you've got Laura Linney, um, Reese Witherspoon, who I haven't seen that film, but I hear she's just magnificent. And so, you know, you, you kind of, it's, it's an extraordinary thing. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy. I'm dead chuffed me, uh, which, is, which is nice. <laughs> she was also nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actress, as well as a number of other awards. In 2007, Kira appeared in Atonement, a gruelling English war drama based on the best-selling novel by Ian McEwan. Joe Wright, who directed her in Pride and Prejudice, had a change of heart about casting her in pre-production. I, I was originally thinking of her for, for Bryony, who's kind of 18 and, and kind of quite unsophisticated. Um, and I guess I, I still had Kira in my head as Elizabeth Bennett. Um, and, uh, and then we turned up at a function in Toronto and, and she was wearing this extraordinary uh, Roland Marais dress. And, um, and she seemed to have grown up a bit. Um, so, uh, so it was then that I thought, well, maybe we should cast her as the older, more... Um, sexually adventurous uh, sister. For Kira, the opportunity to work with Joe again is too good to miss. So I obviously worked with Joe Wright once before when we did uh, Pride and Prejudice and then on a Chanel advert as well and, and I, I mean this was totally, totally wonderful. He's completely obsessed with every aspect of filmmaking and, and so he's an incredibly exciting person to work with. Atonement featured a heated sex scene in a family library that involved getting up close and very personal with Scottish star James McAvoy. James was dismissive of the intense media and public interest in his love scene with Kira. They always make a big deal about Kira kissing anyone, so, you know, I don't know. But it's, it's whatever it is, it's a big sexy scene, it's a big epic love romance thing, and people want to talk rubbish, so they're gone. Um, it was just a day like any other. It was an awkward day, but it was fine. Kira received an Empire Award for her portrayal of Cecilia Tallis. She was also nominated for a BAFTA Award, a Golden Globe and a Satellite Award. In 2008, she starred in The Edge of Love alongside Sienna Miller. The film was based on the life and loves of Welsh poet Dylan Thomas. The script was written by her playwright Mother Shah and Kira found to her horror that she was expected to sing. It was terrifying, um, yes. I mean, I wasn't particularly pleased that Shah had put <laughs> singing into the script anyway. Um, and, and then I, I actually went into a recording studio before we started um, and, and recorded the whole thing and thought that when, I was, when I'd get onto the set, I'd just be miming. And, and John actually came into the makeup trailer on the morning of the scene and went, oh no, you're gonna do it live in front of the hundred or two hundred extras or it and I thought I was going to die um, my my knees actually started buckling in the first couple of takes I sounded like a pubescent boy um, and then somebody very kindly bought me a couple of shots of vodka and everything was all right after that <laughs> the Duchess also released in 2008 was based on the life of the Duchess of Devonshire Kira played the society darling who was renowned for her style and politics and Ralph Fiennes played her husband, a cold man who had his mistress live with him and his wife. At the premiere, there were questions regarding the resemblance to the story of Princess Diana. No, I haven't seen the trailers yet. Um, so, no, I mean, it certainly wasn't our intention when we were making the film to make a film about Princess Diana. This very definitely is a film about the Duchess of Devonshire. Um, and I think that she's certainly a, a, an interesting enough to character to warrant, I mean, definitely one film, if not five or ten. So, um, no, it wasn't my intention to draw parallels to anyone. The Duchess takes a lover who's played by Dominic Cooper. As is usual for the star's on-screen love interests, there was a great deal of focus on how the sex scenes were shot. The, the thing is, I'm meant to look naked, so instead of being naked, I, off, I was given a range of um, products that I could use. One looked like that, actually, and one was um, so a furry sock or a harness or a strap. Kira chose the device, which I thought was very gentlemanly of me to offer her the choice to choose the device. And then once she'd chosen it, she laughed continually at the device, which then probably fell off anyway. 
Akira currently has a number of productions due to be released over the next year, including the British crime romance London Boulevard, which co-stars Colin Farrell. Despite being one of the most influential young actresses in the film industry, Kira seems determined not to let fame change her life too much. She currently lives in London and is dating her co-star from Pride and Prejudice, Rupert Friend. She also enjoys a close relationship with her family. And when she was dressing for the nerve-wracking Golden Globe ceremony in 2005, it was her mother who gave her a hand. You know, I mean, it, it should be fun. She's a laugh, actually. You know, she, she, she's, she's a very good girl, my mum, so it, it should be fun, and it's always good to have her around because um, she, she does make everybody laugh at themselves, which I think is always important when, it, when we're all so worried about what we're going to wear. So um, she's there to kind of chill me out about how the dress looks. Fashion is one of the actress's great loves, and she's appeared on a number of best dress lists. She's also had the great fortune to work on a number of period films where the costumes appeal to her sense of style. She was particularly pleased with a certain glamorous dress in atonement. I, I love the, 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 40, the 30s and 40s, I think, for, if you like, fashion, I think are very, very exciting. They're, they're beautiful, beautiful clothes. And it was really exciting to be able to work with Jacqueline Zaron, the costume designer, who also designed for Pride and Prejudice as well, on this, and, and particularly a certain green dress that appears in the movie, which was just stunning. Um, but um, as far as, I don't know if that, if that reflects what I wear on the red carpet. I tend to wear what I feel like, so I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't long into Kira's career before international fashionistas began taking notice of her red carpet style. And in 2006, she was signed up by fashion house Chanel to become the face of Coco Mademoiselle fragrance, taking over from Kate Moss, who represented the scent since 2002. In 2009, Kira was ringside at a Haute Couture Chanel show in France, no doubt enjoying being a member of the audience for once. What's it like to be the face of such a great house? Oh, it's very exciting, yeah. It's been wonderful to be a part of, of the Chanel family. With her newly acquired millions, the star was well able to afford a selection of the haute couture goodies on show. There was an amazing cream dress quite near the start that was beautiful, and then there was an amazing a black and white I thought the shape for all of them was just extraordinary and very wearable, which is really exciting. It's not only Kira's sartorial elegance that has tickled the fancy of the pollsters. The men's magazine, FHM, has been including Kira on its annual list of the world's sexiest women since 2004, when she entered the chart at number 79. By the following year, she jumped up to the 18th spot. And in 2006, she topped the list. Like all famous women, she soon learned that male attention is both a benefit and a curse of a public profile. But she's also learned how to take all the attention with a big grain of salt. The pouch survey, I know, I've just heard that I've won a Blistex pouch. So I've beaten Angelina Jolie, which frankly is ridiculous. Um, but you know, great. I'll try and pout a lot for the rest of the evening. <laughs> Right now, no, I'm smiling too much at the moment. You can't smile and pout. <laughs> the young star has had her fair share of press harassment, and she admits that a high public profile does lead to some weird situations. I think for me, I'm, I'm an awful one for burying my head in the sand and, and sort of ignorance is bliss, and, and I try not to notice anything. Um, I suppose that's sort of how I cope with it. Yes, it is rather strange. People are now calling my name in the street, um, which is always a little bit odd. Um, but, but no, I mean, yes, I can live a relatively normal life with photographers chasing me around, but apart from that, it's fine. Although she works hard to maintain her normal life, Kira is sometimes dismayed by the extreme lengths that press photographers, who are primarily men, will go to to get their shot. Yeah, I don't cope very well. I don't think anybody does. I think it's a really, really strange uh, thing to have to deal with. Um, and mentally, it's, it's very hard on particularly young women when they're being followed by men. It's, it's not something that should be allowed. I think it's that simple. She has also had to deal with being stalked by fans. And recently, a man was charged with harassment after repeatedly trying to contact her outside a theatre where she was appearing in a play. Then there have been the constant rumours of an eating disorder due to her stick-thin build. 
Throughout it all, Kira has remained adamant that there is nothing unnatural about her eating and exercise regime. No, it was really weird. They said that to me yesterday. They went, how does it feel to be always called anorexic? I had no idea that I was. Um, I can safely say that I'm not. Um, I've got a lot of experience with anorexia. It was in my family, hugely. My grandmother and my great-grandmother suffered for it, from it, and I've got a lot of friends at school who suffer from it, so I don't think it's anything to be taken lightly. Sticking to claims that she wasn't anorexic herself, she did acknowledge that eating disorders among girls and women were a huge issue and warranted more public discussion. I suppose, in a way, it's good that it's, it's out there and people are talking about it, because at least for young girls, you know, it's, it's something that's aware. It's quite interesting because it's normally high-achieving young women that suffer from it. So I guess control, sort of control freaks. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's understandable why you'd associate that with, with sort of high-achieving people in, in, a, in the, the film industry as well. And, and I'm not saying that there aren't people that suffer from it, because I'm sure that there are. Um, I'm not one of them. In 2007, she took the British newspaper The Daily Mail to court for libel when they suggested that a photograph of her on a beach in a bikini was evidence of an eating disorder and that she could be held responsible for the fate of a teenager who died from anorexia. Her lawyer argued that Kira's weight had never fluctuated beyond a few pounds during her adult years and that she was within a healthy weight range for her body type. The actress was awarded £3,000 damages, which she promptly doubled and handed over to BEAT, a charity for eating disorders and mental illness. In 2009, she continued her charity work by appearing in a controversial television campaign to publicise domestic violence. Made by Women's Aid, the ad was slammed by some critics for its graphic violence while others supported the campaign, noting that the portrayal was realistic. For Kira, the campaign presented an opportunity to use her fame for a good cause. Despite having achieved so much so young, she's well aware that there is no guarantee that fame will last. She's been quoted as saying, acting is a profession where one minute you're hot and the next minute it can all go away. Such an attitude will no doubt ensure that this young star will never get too big for her boots.